Hey everyone, it's Paul Sun Young Lee here. Welcome to my geeky basement. In today's video, we're going to be looking at my prized possession, my number one prop, my one-to-one -one scaled replica model of the Ghostbusters 1 Proton Pack with lights and sound. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, before I begin this guided tour of my Proton Pack, uh, I just want to clear some things up. Um, it's been written sometimes in the descriptions of this Proton Pack that I built it from scratch. And I want to say that, no, this is not something that I built from scratch. To me, building from scratch means you, you actually fabricate every bit of the materials that are used on this prop. Uh, the fiberglass shell, um, the, the different aluminum parts, these were parts that I had to source and procure on my own. Somebody else actually fabricated them. I ordered them and I put them together. Um, I did do a scratch build of a proton pack previously, and this was my first attempt. This was from, uh, I think, 2014, and I built this version of a proton pack uh, from scratch. And this is actually made from uh, foam core in Sintra, there's wood, there's found uh, hardware bits in it. And uh, so this is my first attempt that I built from scratch out of these materials. Uh, and this is a scratch build. Um, this was a labor of love. It was really, really difficult. I'll show you here, right, like that. that. That's the inside of it. That's, that's, that's foam core. These are made from plans that I got online, that I, I worked out, I measured, I cut, cut all the foam core. Um, you know, I glued it all together. I lovingly, very, very diligently put it together and made it um, a as close to accurate as I could get. And this is the result of it. Uh, there's no lights anymore. There were very rudimentary lights. It lit up. That's it. No moving lights. No sound. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is, this is an example of a scratch built pack. It's got the MDF wood on the back that's painted silver. Um, it's got tubes, everything that I could make on my own, I did make on my own. Uh, and this is, not, this is a great example of a scratch build. Now this, however, is not a scratch build. All the parts were prefabricated. Uh, I ordered them uh, and I got them uh, put together. So I'll start here. The shell itself, this main body, uh, is made out of fiberglass and it was actually ordered from uh, a craftsperson down in the States. His Twitter, not his Twitter, his, his um, Ghostbusters fans. Now that's where I found this guy on ghostbusterfans.com. Um, his, his username was uh, pchrisbosh1 and this guy's shell was the Cadillac of all shells in my opinion. It looked the most accurate, uh, they had the most detail, and the great thing about it was, or the very difficult thing about it was, um, he only made like two or three of these shells a year, and he wouldn't ship them up to Canada. And I was lucky enough to finally find one that was on sale. I was able to track him down and beg him to send me one. And one of the reasons he wouldn't ship to Canada was because of the cost of shipping. And because I knew it was going to be really, really hard to get one and I really wanted one, I was willing to pay the shipping, which was in excess of $100 US. Um, the shell is solid, it's sturdy, but it's also heavy and it's bulky. So you, now you know why it costs so much to ship up here. Uh, other parts like this bumper here were from England. There's a dude by the name of Nicotron who uh, made this part here specifically that uh, I ordered from. Uh, also these grips on the Proton gun uh, are his as well. Um, the aluminum parts on the shell, you've got the, the booster tube, the ion arm, the HGC uh, tube here, um, all the, the PPD parts, uh, they're all from uh, a fabricator in the States. His name is Freaky Geeky. They're all made out of aluminum. Same with this end filter here. This entire gun here is made out of aluminum. Uh, and so it's heavy. Uh, so again, all these parts, they were sourced, they were, they were um, I got them from uh, different people in the States who uh, fabricated them. And uh, yeah, I put them all together. But all these other little bits here, like the, the clippered valves, these are actual medical valves 
uh, that you can order online and uh, they use them back in the 80s they put together this proton pack the original design and it was made of plywood and they use real world parts to just sort of zhuzh it up and make it look really really cool um, this round piece here that's the cyclotron um, I've seen online now the the genesis of this part might be an old army radio uh, which is really really neat um, and yeah other little bits like these the tubing here which came out and then we also have the um the ribbon cable here this ribbon cable is no longer uh used or made anymore and so this is a special build from uh, fincher technologies they make replica ribbon cables that you can order to remain faithful now this is a gb1 style proton pack and uh, you can tell by the ribbon cable here uh the crank knob here which is actually from this is a replica itself because this this crank knob is now an antique and it's very hard to find they don't make these anymore and anybody who knows what they are knows what they're worth has gobbled them all up and so it's hard to get an actual raytheon crank um uh crank knob but this is from uh my friend don bishop in uh california he's got bionic moon lamps i ordered from him he created a resin casting of it and uh, i put it on a pentium potentiometer to make it spin um the internals i'm going to open this up eventually and i'll show you the insides there's two speakers to it all the electronics were plug and play that i got from gb fans they run straight through this ribbon this uh this tube here all the way to the to the wand uh, i can take off the bottom of this wand and it's a mess of electronics on the inside um and learning how to hook all it up and and dress all the cables and make sure all the lights were connected properly was an exercise in patience. Uh, but I did my research. It was a lot of work to do. It was really hard to do, but it was also a lot of fun to do. And the results speak for itself because I can always do this. <laughs> and that sound makes my heart sing. And I can also do this. So yeah, it's got working lights, all these parts again, they're plug and play uh, that I got from gbfans.com. Uh, now these particular kits, I'm gonna turn this off because it might be a bit loud. And those are screen accurate sounds. Um, so all the, the, the electronics are from GB fans again, but the original uh, designer uh, of these boards and the electronics is a gentleman, by, he goes by the screen name of Spongeface and it's all brilliantly done. It's really, really simple. He's done a lot of the heavy lifting. I've just had to do my own sort of placement of the electronics, make sure I don't short myself out and, uh, and torch myself. And also, um, let me see here. There's another fun little thing. Let's see if I can do that. I'm gonna turn this on. This is an add-on here. Uh, Fincher Technologies, the same company that makes, it's a father-son group in Carolina. They made this ribbon cable. They also make the N-Filter smoke machine, which is a lot of fun, uh, especially because it does this. I'm gonna switch this on and I'm gonna show you what it does. Now this actually wasn't a feature in the movie Proton Packs, but in the video game Proton Packs. If a Proton Pack overheats, there's a venting system which cools down the proton pack. Now this is purely an aftermarket sort of add-on, but it was too cool to pass up when I saw it. And how can you not? How can you not have something like this on your proton pack, especially when, you know, the smoke smells like toasted marshmallows. So this is a, a quick overview of my GB1 one-to-one -one scale replica rebuild of a Ghostbusters proton pack. It is my pride, it is my joy, it is so heavy. Uh, it's mounted on an Alice Pack frame, U.S. Army issue. Uh, it's got uh, LC2 type straps on it. For those of you who are nerdy enough to know what that is, there is a difference between the straps using Ghostbusters 1 and 2. I can't find the ones from Ghostbusters 1 anymore. Uh, if anybody's out there, if you can find them for me, get in touch with me. Um, and uh, yeah, before I forget, uh, I get a lot of people asking about these two Proton Packs that are right behind me. And I'm just going to get rid of this right now. These Proton Packs are actually from Spirit Halloween. Now these are the budget versions 
uh, of a proton pack. Now you can see the size difference between the two. They're about side by side. And these sp uh, spirit packs are about 80% uh, scale size. So it's not quite one to one ratio. You can tell they're a little bit smaller. Um, it's made mostly of plastic. Now this one I have actually modified uh, to make it a little bit more screen accurate. So I added this this ion arm tube here. I changed the ribbon cables. Again, this is through SpongeFace. He has an upgrade kit. I changed the lights so that they actually look um, more uh, screen accurate. I, I did um, all, as well adjust the uh, the wands. I, I modified the wands so they look a lot more screen accurate. And I'm gonna switch this on right now. Oh, this one was left on. The battery's dead. The battery's dead. I'm gonna have to replace it. Maybe the other one won't work. So this is what happens when you let your kids play with their actual toys. They, they forget to, to turn them off, even though they've been begged to turn them off. Let's try the other one. I have two boys. See which ones were more responsible. Who was more responsible with their pack? This one lights up. Aha! simple, very rudimentary, sorry, there you go. <laughs> so these ones, they'd light up as well out of box, but they had a very rudimentary light and sound um, system. And I replaced it again with, with uh, modified electronics from uh, Sponge Face. And um, yeah, I, I, I rejigged their packs to make them look more screen accurate and actually did mount them as well on Alice packs. Um, the original spear packs, when you get them, um, they, they come with just these cheap straps that sort of hold them in place. Uh, the backing isn't solid, it's just all uh, cardboard. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't help myself, so I, I actually modified these things to make them a lot more screen accurate. Uh, and they're still not that screen accurate, but you know what, it's, it's a great starter pack for a lot of people who are out there who want to start cosplaying as Ghostbusters and want to do a little bit more than strap on a, a vacuum cleaner or something on their back, which is fine. I mean, you do, people recognize you with the jumpsuit and if you have something on your back. Um, but if you want a good starter pack with lights, uh, the Spirit Halloween pack is a great, great way uh, to start your journey. Um, because I was a little bit more advanced and because I had the time and because I'm obsessive. Uh, I modified these two uh, proton packs. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please press like, subscribe, leave a comment. I love it when people comment. I try to get back to everybody. I love your feedback. I love everybody's passion. Everybody's been so kind. Thank you so much for following. Thank you so much for watching. During this time of COVID, remember, stay safe, wash your hands, stop touching your face. Okay, see you. Hey everyone, welcome to my geeky basement. It's Paul Sun Young Lee here, and today, I, why do I keep doing this? Oh my God. Hey everyone, it's Paul Sun Young Lee here. Welcome back. Today's episode, do we do episodes? Today's video, video! Hey everyone, it's Paul Sun Young Lee here. Welcome to my, here. Where else am I gonna be? I'm Paul Sun Lee here, but not over there. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at proton packs. More specifically, a GB1 one-to-one -one scale replica model of a proton pack. Welcome to my geeky basement. Guess what? Because you asked for it, you're gonna get it. And it sounds like a threat. So why are you beginning so hard? Because a lot of you asked for it, I'm gonna try doing that without slurring my words. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at my GB1 insert. Oh my god. My one-to-one -one scale replica model. One-to-one -one scaled replica model. My one-to-one -one replica rebuilt. Uh, this is uh, my one. Oh God, I gotta start that again. Welcome back. Okay, uh, before we begin this tour of my one-to-one -one replica rebuild, rebuild replica, it's it's. Oh my God, it's one-to-one -one scaled replica rebuild. rebuild. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Like I said, uh, before I begin with this tour of this one-to-one -one scaled. Uh, oh my God, I want to make a distinction. Um, between, oh my God, I had to find them, track them down, order them, wait for them to arrive, and then I put them together. Wow, what was that? I don't know how to turn it off. 
it's over here. It's underneath the Pokemon pack.